everyone, and welcome to the Canadian Storytellers Christmas 2021 edition with the North Granville Writers Circle. I'm Pam Wally, and today I'm sitting down with Kate Hartfield. Uh, so Kate has a master's degree in journalism. She's a former Ottawa Citizen columnist, editorial board member, and editorial pages editor. An in-demand freelance editor, she also teaches journalism at Carleton University and creative writing online for the Loft Literary Centre. Kate's historical fantasy novel, Armed in Her Fashion, won the Aurora Award for Best Novel in 2019. She has published two time travel novellas titled Alice Payne Arrives and Alice Payne Rides, and her interactive fiction works include The Road to Canterbury and The Magician's Workshop. The Course of True Love was published as part of a collection titled Monstrous Little Voices, New Tales from Shakespeare's Fantasy World. Her short fiction has appeared in Strange Horizons, Lackington's, Escape Pod, and elsewhere. Kate is a former board member of the Ottawa International Writers Festival. She has served on juries for the Ottawa Book Award and the Sunburst Award. Welcome, Kate. Thank you very much. I'm so happy to be here. It's happy to see you again, too. Yeah. Last time we saw you. We did see each other in person since COVID. And we saw each other during the downtown promenade. In, in the summer, summer. Yeah. yeah. Which is um, amazing. Now we're Christmas. <laughs> yeah. And before that, you know, it's like a yeah. long period of just uh, online for, for yeah. the most of us. So I'd like to start by asking you about the interactive games that you wrote for. I've never mm -hmm. actually met anybody who's done that before. So for cho you did it for Choice of Games, mm -hmm. titled The Magician's Workshop and The Road to Canterbury. Can you tell us a little about how this came about and share what the games are about and maybe speak on your experiences of developing them? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Choice of Games writes, um, it's all text-based, but it's on your phone or on your computer. So it's an app, but it's text-based. and. Uh, you read the story and then every paragraph or so you get to make a choice about what you want to have happen next. So I, um, I, I knew a couple of people who had written for them and I looked at their website and they said, you know, we're happy to have writers pitch us anytime. So just send your CV and a sample and if we like it, we'll get back to you and you can pitch us. So that's what I did. And it was, you know, maybe a month or two of, of pitching them and developing some outlines and that kind of thing. And, and eventually we came up with a couple of stories um, and they took about, I would say about a year each to write because there's a lot of material because you have so many different storylines that could happen. So um, the first one is um, about Chaucer and it's uh, sort of loosely based on the Canterbury Tales. And the second one, The Magician's Workshop, is in uh, Renaissance Florence. So it's kind of Leonardo da Vinci, but with magic. So they were tons of fun to write. I really enjoyed it. Oh, very good. Very interesting. Should I turn the page off? No, that's listening. I was just listening. So Alice Payne Arrives is about a time traveling woman in the 18th century, her scientist girlfriend, and a rude mil rogue military officer from the future. Alice is a notorious highway robber in 1788. Mm -hmm. Skip to 1889, and a major prudence, Zeninga, is attempting to change history to save history. Then in 2020, the farmers and guides are locked in battle with time as their battleground and the world, with the world as their prize. Mm -hmm. Alice Payne Rides involves an international pandemic across time after Alice abducts author of Brittany from the year 1203, bringing the smallpox virus with them to 1780. I think it's pretty interesting that Alice Payne writes about an international pandemic was actually published prior to COVID-19. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk about what interested you in historical fantasy time travel and what inspired you to write the Alice Payne books? Yeah, absolutely. So these are the two on the end here, which are the, the slim books, they're novellas. And, um, but as you can tell from the introduction, there's a lot of plot that's packed into these <laughs> tiny books. They're very pacey and, uh, you know, they are time travel, uh, novellas. And, um, I've always been interested in, you know, sort of historical mysteries, you know, finding out, wouldn't it be cool to be able to go and find out what actually happened? And, uh, so one of the characters in Alice Payne Rides, um, takes that attitude to time travel where he wants to use it to go and, and find out what actually happened in history. And he goes back in time to the time of, of King John and Richard the Lionheart, and he finds out what happened to a person who went missing. And um, unfortunately, uh, brings back smallpox uh, to, to the 18th century, where smallpox already existed, but uh, creates an epidemic and they don't have the vaccine yet. Um, so, um, yeah, it is the, the whole novella is sort of taking place in this backdrop of the time when the smallpox vaccine was just being developed by Edward Jenner and others um, based on the cowpox um, uh, disease. And, um, you know, it, it just really fascinated me the way that, that humanity came together 
in a couple of ways to defeat smallpox, um, both initially in the 18th century with the development of the vaccine, and then later on in the 20th century with the eradication of smallpox, which is still, I think, one of the best things that humanity's ever done. Uh, so yeah, I just found that really fascinating, and um, it is definitely a book about the power of vaccination, so it did turn out to be timely in a way that I certainly never expected when I wrote it back in 2018. Yeah, very, very timely for sure. Yeah. Um, so the embroidered book, so yeah. this is your... This is the big one, this is a, an advanced version of this, so it's got a different, a slightly different title um, cover, which doesn't have a title out yet, but this is uh, for reviewers and booksellers to get a, a sense of it. It's coming out next year. Very exciting. Yeah. And uh, very, very large. Yeah. <laughs> How long were you working on that? Uh, a few years, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I started in late 2015, although I did other things at the same time. Yeah. But yeah, it's a big book. Okay. <laughs> so it takes place before and during the French Revolution. Mm -hmm. um, empowered with a book of spells in childhood, Charlotte and Antoine, Antoine mm -hmm. used their secret skills to redefine their lives and become influential women of the time. Mm -hmm. the, your website posts a content note that some of the themes in the book might be difficult for some readers. Can you talk a little bit about the story and the characters in the embroidered book? Yeah, absolutely. So it is about uh, Marie Antoinette, who's you know the famous queen of France, who was called Antoine when she was a child growing up in Austria, and her sister um, Charlotte, who became the queen of Naples. So they're familiar figures, or at least Marie Antoinette, I think, is familiar to everybody, and I think almost too familiar in a way is that we we sort of think we know a lot about her, but there's a lot I think that's um, less well known or or less understood. So it's about. Um, these sisters, uh, as if, and, and, and posits that they are magicians, they're secretly magicians, and secretly there is magic in the world. And so magic is, is sort of a metaphor, as it often is, for power. And how do these sisters uh, find and use power? What choices do they make, and um, you know, what mistakes do they make that um, have an effect on the world around them and their own lives? Uh, so it, is, it, is, it covers about three decades in France and in Italy. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a really big historical fantasy. And it is, there's some, the reason that I have a content note about it is because I think readers will expect some violence. Uh, you know, it does take place during the French Revolution and before. Um, but there are other things in, in women's lives at that time that, um, you know, that people might not expect, such as, you know, the, the, the death of children, for example. And so that's something that I want to just have everyone's uh, mind, you know, before yeah. they pick it up, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, are you starting to think about your next project? And if so, are you open to sharing? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I've got uh, one thing that just was announced, actually, which is that I'm writing a book that's a tie-in novel with the world of the Assassin's Creed video game, which is super fun. And um, I'm just I'm writing that now. So that'll be out in the summer of 2022. Uh, and this one comes out um, in February in the UK and probably a couple months later in Canada. Okay, well congratulations on that. Congratulations on the, uh, the upcoming book. Uh, Thank you. Writing in the pandemic, did it uh, change your writing routine and process at all? Um, not too much, uh, with the main exception being that um, I realized how, how much I like to get out of the house sometimes and come to the coffee shop in Kempville or to the library in Kempville <laughs> and, uh, and just, you know, have an hour where I don't have any laundry to do or <laughs> anybody around me, you know. Um, I can't check Facebook because I feel like I'm out writing, so I have to be writing. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I didn't realize how much I really relied on that to keep myself going. And also writing with friends, you know. So that um, has been an adjustment, I think, for all of us, uh, you know, being stuck in our houses or, or um, you know, at least in my case, stuck in my house. But I'm, I think I'm getting used to it now. Right, yeah. Like, unfortunately, we are, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so one final question. If you were to write a Christmas or a New Year's book, what do you think would be about? Or can you share your favorite memory holidays or talk about upcoming holidays for the season? Yeah, um, it's hard to say what I would what I would write about for sure. I do love, um, you know, we, we celebrate a, a secular Christmas and we love the um, the tree and, and the stockings and the gifts and all that stuff. And uh, you know, I have I have a kid and so of course he's big into Christmas. So I think our favorite part of Christmas is probably going to pick out a tree. We get a, a real tree every year and uh, cut it down ourselves and decorate it. And it's always too big for our living room. And, mm -hmm. you know, but it, I think there's a lot of comfort in those traditions. And especially these days, I think um, there's this sense of normalcy and a sense of, um, 
you know, comfort that comes with all of that. So I'm really looking forward to that this year. I like the building memories idea, especially with kids, right? So mm -hmm. that's something that your son can remember. For yeah, you. absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so I um, want to thank the North Granville Public Library for letting, hosting us today in their beautiful library. Uh, to learn more about Kate Hartfield, you can visit her website at hartfieldfiction.com and follow her on Goodreads. You can find the interactive games on Stream, the Google Play Store, Amazon, the Choice of Games app for iOS, or play them online. The first few chapters are free to play. To join her writing class, Writing fiction, Historical Fiction for the 21st Century, you can visit loft.org and it starts on the 4th of December. Uh, thank you again, Kate, for sitting down with me today. Thank you very much and Merry Christmas to you and everyone else. Merry Christmas. Thanks.